But joking aside, the invitation means that it's completely open to any kind of influence, mm. which then automatically screams, well, a FIFA now doing their own version of the European Super League, which yeah. basically they yeah. are, but it's a world version. The Club World Cup is going to be relaunched in the summer of 2025, and it's going to be completely different to how we see it now. It's going to feature 32 teams and run every four years. So essentially, it's almost like another World Cup but for clubs rather than countries. At the moment, the way we see the Club World Cup in its format at the moment, it's played mid-season uh, and it features the seven winners of the different confederation tournaments, in, including the winners of the Champions League. So at different stages different as well. Different stages. Stagged, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. they enter at different times. So for fans of the Premier League, you'll remember that last season... Chelsea were in this and they played from the semi-finals into the final and then they won that match. Uh, they won those two matches. So they won that tournament. This is going to be completely different because it's going to be played in the summer and it will almost feel like a completely new tournament. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's, so it's going to be like a World Cup, isn't it, essentially? I think, you know, FIFA basically want their own Champions League. Um, and that's kind of what they're doing here with this. It's easy to be cynical about it because players just aren't going to get summers off ever soon. Like we, it won't it's be. Mad, isn't it? We, yeah, were, it? we were thinking about this, weren't we? So next summer we've got the women's World Cup. The following year we've got the men's Euros. The year after that would be, the would be this Cup. new Club World Cup, and then the following year would be the traditional World Cup in America, Canada, and Mexico. I mean, where where is there a break? Well, I think it it, it looks like the plan is that sooner or later there just won't be a break maybe squads will get bigger I don't know but I think it's very easy to be cynical about this but it's an, an interesting proposition because it's it's going to happen now we know that so I suppose we'll watch it it will be elite teams playing football it will be good and we'll, we'll enjoy it that's just how these things always go isn't it it's how they get you because mm. uh, the thing you like is good um, but actually football is a really global sport right so from a practical sense, if you were building that up from the ground now, this tournament does make a hell of a lot of sense. And what I'm trying to think about with it is that we've been speaking a lot over this month about the World Cup and about the changes to the World Cup and how it is so repetitive that it is so Eurocentric. And I say Eurocentric because though Argentina are in the final uh, on Sunday, a South American team hasn't won since 2002. So if, if, even, even with those two powerhouses, one of them is starting to pull away. So it would be really good for football if there were quite serious contenders from different continents. And I don't know if a club tournament once every four years is actually going to have much of a meaningful impact on that. But if it is a step towards that, then maybe some sort of positives will come out of it. I don't know. I think that is a, that is a thing that football needs. It, it, it needs to break that dominance of those two continents, I think. But well, the, um, the example you were given earlier was the Jap Japanese example, right? Yeah. Where they're trying to invest in their own football and try and get a World Cup winner by... 2050 it is. Yeah. So, so, so the clubs... The, the clubs in Japan potentially playing against European teams and test themselves in the competitive environment, bringing players through would be beneficial for that, right? Absolutely. In, in theory, it would. But then it, it depends how many clubs it is, right? Cause it, well, the, the issue I think is that, um, and, and the devil, as ever with these kind of things, are in the detail. And you guys have identified the issues pretty well and, and I totally agree with them. And it is around the volume of football being played and what's been expected yeah, of the, the players. And the players constantly getting caught up in this rivalry between two organisations, which are FIFA and UEFA. Mm. And the, the 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 detail I found interesting in what Infantino said was that he said teams are going to be invited, not qualified. Yeah, that right. Because I guess it. they can't make them qualify because it would be again too yeah. much football, and they wouldn't know where to get the thirty two teams from. So if if the media officer from um, Fratton Park's listening, look out for the post because uh, <laughs> keep your eye on the post because I'm sure Pompey will get their uh, their invite. But but, sure they will. but but joking aside, the invitation means that it's completely open to any kind of influence, mm. which then automatically screams, well, a FIFA now doing their own version of the European Super League, which yeah. basically they are, yeah. but it's a world version. And then you come at, you see instantly the reaction from UEFA. They're instantly against it, right? Straight away, as you'd expect. But the key sentence I read in the reporting of it was the top clubs will be persuaded to do it anyway mm. if the money is right and FIFA yeah. are rumoured to be offering £150 million pounds of prize money. Yeah. So the clubs are going to see which side their bread's buttered on because that's the way these things always go, yeah. particularly with these new big billionaire owners. And it could seismically change how we see football being played. Yeah. And also, um, if, if you are a club that doesn't have a billionaire, like sort of, that isn't like backed by one of the, the big states, essentially, it would be reckless to not enter it. What did David Dean say? David Dean said... 
in the in the years he's been involved in football, it started out being local businessmen who are passionate about their club. Then it became millionaires. Hmm. Then it became billionaires, and now it's becoming states. Mm. And that's the that's how the club ownership model works. I, I totally understand the idea that you're making, the point you're making, Jim, about the competitiveness of the game and making it much more global. I want to make it clear I'm being very generous. No, you with are. That but, but, uh, uh, but what I'm saying is that's fine, but you can't just keep layering and pu- mm. piling stuff mm. on top because there's no, there's no break. Where, where does it end? Yeah, Sub-league where exactly. they play at half-time. <laughs> like yeah. It is good to, to hear both sides of the argument though because that's what we're here to do. We're here to discuss these things on, on both sides of it. Um, I, I'm intrigued to know how the clubs would view this as well in terms of priority because... Um, has Jürgen and- Klopp exploded yet? <laughs> Jürgen Klopp yeah. will explode. <laughs> also, like, is it... Will it become more prestigious than winning the Champions League? I well, mean, that's the, idea the question, of, isn't it? Yeah. Because w- what do you want to be? The best club in Europe and win the Champions League or the best club but in I the think... world and win the Club World Cup? Because right now, let's be real, no one gives a shit about the Club World Cup. No. It's played in March, I think. Well, in South um, America, they care about it. Do they it. care? I think so. Do they? I think they care about it a great think, deal. I don't think Chelsea cared that much. I think if you win it, you care. No, in South America, they yeah, care Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as in like last year, I don't... I generally don't, speaking. I, I think but, generally but, speaking, no one really cares. But the reality of it, at least in the first instance, because of the imbalance that you guys have identified, which I agree with as well, is that you get to the Club World Cup and you play it in this format. Well, who are the last four teams going to be? Mm. They're going to be... It's going to be Chelsea... Yeah. You know, Man City, PSG, Madrid, and Barcelona. Yeah, it's, also. It's, it's, and they've they gone deep in the Champions League as well. It's, exactly. it's just, it's really. I, I, Same I think, shit, different flavour. I think the, the, the biggest difference between this and maybe the European Super League, if we're, we're going to kind of put them up against each other in terms of an argument, is this, this wouldn't necessarily affect the domestic leagues like a European Super League. Would well, it, would, it would if you get players who don't get a break throughout the entire summer? Yeah, that's three a big years problem. in a row. I think it's a massive problem for the players, but that's been a problem for so long now. Yeah. Who, who is it affects the transfer market as well? Who, who is it who realistically stopped the European Super League happening? It was fans, wasn't it? And the players. Mm. The players instantly came out and said no. So they they could be the ones that stop this as well. We don't know. Mm. 